You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So, sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. This is probably like the second uh, us team I've ever had in my life. The Rembrandt, the sacred art collection. Wow. Very sacred, very artsy. I'm smoking a... Jeez. Hopefully these hiccups stop. I'm smoking the Besa Maduro Mexican San Andreas wrapper. Very delicious cigar but outside of that thank you for tuning into another episode of the cigar guys podcast we are going to be talking about how to choose the right cigar for any occasion we'll talk about different occasions what cigars we would recommend for those occasions oh man bear with me as i get over the hiccups and we'll you know Probably go through some side topics as we usually do, but uh, Jared's also got some Davidoff Mini Gold Cigarillos, which you don't talk about a lot. I actually really like those. I mean, yeah, so those are like 15 bucks for 20, so less than a dollar per cigarillo. They're great for, in my opinion, like I finished a cigar, let's say we're all hanging out still, Zach, Mark... Jared, they're still smoking the cigar. Pull one or, one or two of those out. Smoke on those. But they taste great too. I mean, it's it's not it's not cheap tobacco, to say the least. <clears throat> oh fuck. Excuse it's funny, me. that's like the third box I've actually purchased in the last month, but they keep disappearing. I don't know if I'm leaving them in my humidor at home, my lock of the cigar shop. Here, I don't know where they're going. They're very easy to go through. Yeah. I'm disappointed, though, because the ones you had last time, they don't have them anymore. <laughs> oh, the one that in the tin? In the tin, yeah. So, at the other location, they do. I bought some the other day. Oh. That's where you got them? Yeah, but I don't know where they went, so I had to buy these. Um, uh, The box is still pretty high quality. It, it really protects the uh, cigars, though. Have you ever had the uh, silver cigarillos? Yeah. Uh, The goal is supposed to be more... Medium full. The silver is supposed to be like mild, medium. So it's just a matter of strength and uh, what you prefer. I'm curious to know what you think about this El Subtimo cigar, though. I mean, you know, obviously not yet. We'll get into it. Yeah. For $500 so far, uh, the first puff is pretty good. uh, Excuse me. (laughs) May the hiccups go away. Maybe. I I got so stunned. (laughs) No, uh, it didn't work. You got to hold your breath for like, yeah. Is it working? Is it working? I'm holding my breath. Mm. But yeah, so we're talking about cigars for different occasions. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this episode. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you want to see more of these in the future or other content that we post also go to the description below all our social media is in there but yeah so jared we're going to talk about matching the right cigar for the occasion a lot of people don't think about this but it is something to think about depending on what occasion you're going for it might require a different sort of cigar whether it's more relaxed whether it's more of a um exciting occasion celebratory occasion so we're kind of just going to talk about that our opinions on what we would smoke for each occasion and potentially other topics of course as we usually do so i think the main thing the importance of it is now this is up for debate but i i think that certain cigars are for different occasions right would you agree compared to uh I mean, you smoke a cigar every day. Is that also an occasion? Or are you talking about like weddings, birthdays? You and I are the type of guy where, you know, every day we wake up, it's a great day. It's a reason to celebrate. 
but yeah, I'm talking more about, you know, okay, we're going to a wedding, we're going to, you know, the casino or like someone's gender reveal or some something more fancy versus every day or, you know, just hanging out in the backyard or in the studio. So we're going to kind of do differentiations between the two. Mainly, not necessarily for yourself, but maybe what you would bring to a friend or to your guests. I think that's that's more of what we're going to lean towards. What would you provide for your guests? Every day, you know, we'll give you a base, uh, whatever's in the humidor. But if you're going to someone's wedding or if you're going to like a, a gender reveal, an important occasion, you might want to bring something that's a little more higher in price or not even higher in price, but something that's more special, whether it's more rare whether it's more sought after, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess when you say uh, bring something to a large occasion, I feel like we might have to uh, bring a cigar that everyone might like. So probably something more on the lighter side. Yeah, you, you occasionally get maybe somebody who doesn't or has never smoked a cigar before who might say to themselves, "It's a little too much for me." Uh, especially people who actually inhale, and they kind of get that little fake buzz you keep talking about. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do get, bring up a good point, though. You have to consider who's going to be at this event. Is it cigar smokers or is it not people that don't smoke cigars very often? Like personally, if I was going to hand out the base uh, to a large event, we're talking maybe at least thirty people who we know will actually take it out of the cellophane and light it up and actually try it. <laughs> I'd give them the Habano. Honestly, yeah. I wouldn't risk wasting a Maduro because uh, you know I can't take it back and then smoke all mall myself. You know. I mean, I guess I could, but you I could. Mean, but too, I mean, think about it. We'll talk about this too. Size is important. So you might give them a base of Rothschild because it's shorter. Yeah. And they don't have to be there for, you know, the whole hour, the whole hour, hour plus. Um, so all these things are going to be considered and we'll talk more about that. But yeah, so common occasions, for example, someone's birthday, a wedding, holiday, Business meetings. These are all yeah. things that we take into account. Yeah, I was, was going to say um, corporate events is an easy one. Yeah. You want to maybe impress whoever's going to be there for whatever reason it is. Closing a deal or... Promotions. Yeah. Friday evenings. Major sale events. Um, especially uh, definitely pre-COVID. Uh, I remember I used to go to uh, tons of... Uh, like corporate events that were held with like, you know, hundreds to maybe a few thousand people, you know, brought over from different time zones, other things like that. That'd be a great occasion if they had an outside portion, you know, if you had a hand roller there or to be able to pass out cigars from a box. That's another good point. Are you going to have a cigar roller there? That's very special. I think it's become more popular, especially at weddings and such, corporate events. And a lot of great reviews too, even people that don't smoke cigars. It's just something cool to have to say, oh, this guy's literally rolling a cigar in front of me. It's like the ultimate uh, ideal luxury status, if that makes sense. It's kind of like a show and tell. And then if you would like to, you can smoke it there. Even though if it's a, you know, if it's a newly rolled cigar, yeah. you might want to keep it in humidor for a little bit. Uh, Ideally, what I would do in these situations is get three or four, smoke one there because, you know, you're going to smoke at the event. Take the other ones, throw them in the humidor. Yeah, wait at least two or three weeks for them to settle oh! to settle and taste uh, the best. Because, yeah, you're absolutely right. When you roll a cigar fresh, it's not going to be arguably ready to smoke right away. Yeah. You want to let it sit for a bit. Um, Don't mean to sound superficial either when talking about this, but do you have a story where maybe... You brought the wrong cigar for the occasion, whether it was a cigar that may not be up par, up to par for the occasion, or you maybe brought a cigar that was too expensive or too luxurious for the occasion, or if is it is this not happened before? I'd say the opposite. Where uh, I'm pretty sure uh, I don't. I, I, it wasn't this year. I think it was like two new years ago. We were at a uh, friend of a friend's ho house where mm. we handed out cigars. It's more of an education thing, you know, how to cut, how to light. This was New Year's, I believe. New Year's, not last one, but the one before. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it ends up being, I think people are very interested in trying, but they also need to know, you know, not to inhale, how to cut, what type of cut works for you, what doesn't, and is a cigar light enough for you to kind of get an entry point into cigars. 
you know. That is true. And at this event, since it was people that were not cigar smokers, someone brought them and they were sharing them. They were sharing them. And uh, the first guy that came up to us was like, hey, can I get a light? I think it was me. I was like, yeah, I got a lighter. So I start lighting a cigar and he's puffing on it. Nothing's happening. And nothing's happening. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, let me see that. He didn't cut the cigar. So I'm like, oh, buddy, you gotta, you gotta cut the cigar. <laughs> you gotta be able to puff through. Yeah. He's like, oh, okay. I mean, these are younger kids too. So, um, I cut it for him, lit it for him. I showed everyone else there, you know, how to do it. And, uh, I'm sure that they didn't smoke a cigar until the next New Year's party they went to. Yeah. I really don't, I think it's not really an age thing. It's more or less, uh, they probably thought it was like a large cigarette instead of like a cigar. That's true. That's um, true. Yeah. Cause you pull a cigarette out, it's ready to go. All you gotta do is light it. It's already cut. Even cigarillos, like we talked about, for the most part, especially the minis, they're usually going to be cut already. So they're ready to go. All you got to do is light it. Actually, yeah, these are minis. What, what is the next size up? What, what is that called? So mini is usually the smallest. Yeah. Um, And then I'm not sure. I can't think of the term for what the next size up would be. Um, Small min, mini cigars usually is what they're called so or like um long cigarillos it depends on the brand they have different names for them yeah usually those you have to cut <laughs> yeah they're slightly they have a slightly bigger ring gauge they're slightly longer depends on uh the brand that produces them actually didn't you buy a box of astrons yourself cigarillos not so long ago yeah those were minis so those were like that so they're already oh, cut okay all right um and then even like you have minis that are longer those will still be cut but i think once you get to a larger ring gauge like slightly larger <gasps> those usually get to cut for yourself i apologize for the hiccups i can't get rid of them usually it's you know quickly done but right now i'm just struggling with them so i i think they're they're capped because uh you know as you get you know increase the size you don't want to unravel right that's part of the reason but two i think um like with a, a regular size cigar, like a Toro or something, if it was, let's say we pre-cut a Besa and had it in the humidor, or had it in the humidor for a long time, it would actually lose some flavor because of the air that's flowing through. So that's why when you get a cigar, you don't want to cut it and then store it because you'll actually lose some of that flavor. So I think when you get to a, a bigger ring gauge, you want to have it capped. So that way you don't have the air flowing through the cigar. And it, it's basically like the, the filler is aging faster. So you're losing flavor a lot faster than you would like. Is there any occasion you actually accidentally do that? Like, why would you cut a cigar and put it back in your humidor? I think um, sometimes maybe let's say this happens when you don't smoke a lot of cigars. You go buy some cigars and they say, oh, would you like them cut? And you say, oh, yeah. Yeah. So you get them cut. They might cut all of them for you. And, uh, you know, Sure enough, it's like, okay, well, I'm only smoking one. So you take them home, put them in the humidor maybe, or you're smoking, smoking one tomorrow, which isn't that bad. But so that that's happened to me before. It's like, oh, would you like them cut? I'm like, yeah, straight cut. Not thinking about it. So the guy cuts like all, cuts two or three of them. And it's like, oh, well, three cigars. I'm smoking one. Yeah. Three cigars. Exactly. I, I, I didn't mean it. I only wanted you to cut one. You're the professional, right? Ugh. So, okay. We'll start with um, cigars for celebration. Whether it's a wedding, anniversary, corporate event, like you said. New Year's. <laughs> New Year's, sure. I mean, New Year's can be... It depends on the, the New Year's event. I will make up an event just to pull a cigar out. I agree with that. Especially if I'm the only person there with a cutter, a lighter, and of course a cigar. At that point, though, whatever you pull out, you're automatically the top dog. So, I mean, it's like. <laughs> but seriously, like last year, you know, I used my points from the cigar shop to buy a box of like Patron 1926s. There may have been whiskey involved, maybe, uh, but I started handing out the Padrones because I felt like, you know, New Year's in a few days. Why not? I had to use the points. I had to get Padrones. Why not share, you know, the love, essentially? I mean, if you've never had a Padron before, it's really nice to just, you know, taste, have, Maybe a little stronger for some people, but I absolutely love it. I mean, anytime I've been handed a Padron, it's always like, how'd you know? Thank you yeah. so much. I mean, it's always really nice to have one. I think, too, what's great about the cigar community is 
at least from our experience, people seem to be very generous and willing to share with you. It's like, I really like the cigar. I want you to try it. I've experienced that a lot. I've been on the receiving and giving end. Yeah. No pun intended. And to be clear, when you say try a cigar, you're giving someone a full cigar, no, ideally no, no, no. in cellophane, not, we're not going back and forth no, here. No, 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 This is not vaping. This is not uh, hookah. Uh, All the know. viewers will notice, if you're watching, we're not sharing cigars. We each have our own cigar. We don't share cigars. That's not appropriate at all. It's kind of when I say pass the ketchup. I'm not like using it and putting it back in the bottle. I'm not like know. pouring it on your plate <laughs> and then using like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not dipping my fries in your ketchup. We have separate ketchup plates. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When, so, when, actually, real fast. When was the last time you actually saw that at the cigar lounge where you saw someone passing the same cigar around? Um, it's been a while. I know that you and I think Mark experienced oh, that. Maybe it was Mark. Okay. Yeah. I know that you and Mark uh, witnessed it. Not experienced firsthand, but witnessed it. Group of guys, younger guys, I think, sharing the cigar. I have to say it's worse than smoking a flavored cigar. I'm going to say it right now. It's worse than smoking a flavored cigar, in my opinion, which you can have a different opinion, but in my opinion, it's it's just not. No, you don't do that. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so anyway, you're going to a wedding. You're buying a cigar for uh, the groom or the groomsmen. Uh, let's start with the groom. The groom, you want to treat well. You know, you want to get him a nice cigar. Uh, luxury cigar, I would say, is 20 plus in price. So a Padron would be a good example. Or an Elsa Timo. Or Davidoff. Davidoff, as you smoked before we came here. <laughs> yeah, that's um, true, I did. Yeah, which we, we have. It's a high-end kind of day, I guess. I don't know. I guess so, yeah. Kind of balance out the mellowing of all the rain. As Zach said in a previous podcast, you're feeling down. He wants to smoke an expensive cigar to lift his spirits. So I think you're kind of going through that right now. It's raining. It's really gloomy outside. <laughs> what a better way to uh, improve your spirits than to smoke a $25 cigar. And then I don't even know how much this one is, uh, but I know that El Timo yeah. is high in price. We'll, we'll check after this. <laughs> I, I don't feel mellow today, but usually when it rains, it's kind of like a dollar kind of day. Yeah, but, you, you know, know, I just, I just, you know, happen to reach into my humidor and pull out whatever, whatever my hand desired, you know, that's really what it was. Exactly. The, the, the top cigars were, Oh, I guess we're smoking Davidoff today. I guess we're smoking El Timo. You know, sometimes God just blesses you that way. You know, he kind of guides you in the right direction. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Jared, you needed to smoke these cigars today. There's a, there's a, there's a several things I've been blessed with this year. Uh, thank God. Uh, <laughs> uh, never mind. Moving on, moving on. But yeah, yeah, yeah always yeah. blessed. 2024 has been a good year. 2025 is going to be even better, especially Not, if yeah. you vote the right way. Um, so I would recommend, yeah, treating the, Guest of honor, in this case, let's say the groom, with a nice cigar, twenty, twenty five, thirty dollar cigar. Um, not, not to say that expensive cigars are always good, but it's to show your, um, appreciation for that person, to show that you are thinking about them in a good way. Um, a Padron is a great bet. Um, the Alfonso is good. Or a newer brand that we can talk about too, Saint Pere. That would be a fantastic gift to someone that has smoked at least a few cigars in their day. They'll absolutely enjoy that cigar. Which color though? That's a we all try different colors. It's a good point. You know, I would say um, we got to go back. We got to try them again. Yeah, but if it's someone that hasn't smoked cigars a lot, whether it's their first time or you know they only dabble, the Blue Label which I smoked, is a Connecticut that's much lighter. Uh, if it's someone that smokes cigars more often, you could go for the purple or the red. They're going to be a little on the stronger side. But the thing about these cigars is they're all aged 10 years, so they're going to be very smooth. It's not going to be super full body. Um, if you know that the person you're buying for likes really strong cigars, get them the Padron, Maduro, maybe a 50-year or something from the Family Reserve. Uh, that would be very nice. For the groomsmen, you don't have to buy everyone 
you know, the really expensive cigars. You can get the groomsmen, something that's in the ten, fifteen dollar range. That's high quality. Uh, even Padron does go into the fifteen dollar range, or um, Perdomo is a good brand to buy. Like if you're buying a box for, let's say, the groomsmen and other people at the wedding, get a box of Perdomos or um, a box of, let's say, Foundation or Amusha Saka, something that's in the ten to fifteen dollar range. So that way you're showing your appreciation for this person, but you're also not breaking the bank. You know what I'm saying? So we don't get you a unicorn for your wedding. I mean, if you really like that person and you know they're going to appreciate it, I would. I mean, we had the tradition of, uh, I guess it was before Jared's time. Maybe we had to bring this tradition back. But for every birthday, we would buy that person a unicorn. And now there's three different options. So we could buy light body, medium, or more full body. And, uh, you know, experiment a bit, try the different ones. Yeah, it's just terrible that, you know, our local cigar lounge is just, you know, they never in. They're always out. So we got to go to the, uh, the, the ones on the outer rim <laughs> to find these cigars, which is okay. We, we love supporting all our local shops, whether it's across the street or within a 20 mile radius. Um, so, you know, for your birthday, which is coming in January, I think I'm going to bring the trend back. Actually, technically, Zach's birthday's next in November, so maybe I'll bring it back in November, and that way by your birthday, we're all accustomed to it, and you can get maybe one or two unicorns to try. That way, you can catch up to the rest of us. How does that sound? Sounds great. I just feel like we kind of killed the surprise for a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> you well, know, actually, I we, we could that. try the ones we didn't try. Exactly. That's what so I'm what saying. So what was the one that you had before? So there's the, ori- the original unicorn. And then he came out with um, a Sober Mesa, which is like the Connecticut wrapper. I think it's got the sweet tip. And then there's a uh, Mi, yeah, there's a Mi Kierda, which is the even darker than the original. I believe it's more full body. That's the one I'm excited to try. Let me ask this. Is it possible to try the Connecticut without the sweet tip? Can you just cut the cap off slowly? I mean, I think theoretically you could. You just run the risk of unwrapping, uh, unraveling. And at the same time, too, with that shape, it might be harder to draw, but you have experienced recently these 80 ring gauges from Asylum. So I think you might actually be okay with that. You just cut the sweet tip off. But the unicorns are 80 ring gauges? No. So it's like an egg shape oh, you're almost. Give an example. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. But if you cut too much of the tip off, then the ring gauge that you're smoking is bigger because it's got this taper sort of thing. You know, So you know the egg cigar from Drew State? Yeah. It's a similar, actually, it's not, it's similar in the sense that it starts small, gets big in the middle, and then it's small again. So the more you cut off, the bigger the ring gauge is that you're smoking, if that makes sense. Yeah. I guess worst case, we can use those, um, I forget what we call them, like those things that have uh, the cigar. Those mouth mouth pieces. pieces. I forgot you have those. Like if it starts to unravel, I quickly put one on those. That's true. Have you used those before? I still have yet to use one. It's been a while. It's been months, actually. I think they're on top of my humidor at home. That was when your other friends gave them to you. Yeah, I just don't. Because usually, they work really great. But the issue is when you get down to the nub part, you know, the, the part that essentially gets a little hot for your hands or maybe may not be, uh, gets lodged in there. So uh. you're kind of stuck in the situation of like, did I waste a few dollars? Uh. And you have to push it out. Okay, gotcha. But that's where the uh, cigar picks come in, like the metal picks. Yeah. But if it's already unraveling, you're pretty much dead in the water. So That's true. Yeah, those are interesting too. I haven't used one yet, but it's essentially a mouthpiece you put on, kind of like if you were to buy a black and mild that comes with a wooden tip. Or like a filter for a cigarette. Yeah, before a cigar. So you put it on, and the purpose is so that way you can smoke further without burning your fingers or you know sometimes it gets hard to yeah yeah continue to smoke a cigar when it gets to the nub even though it does get lodged in there you can still keep smoking it kind of like a pipe but uh if you're only smoking one cigar it works out but you're gonna have to like push it out and clean it out yeah i mean you know you got to work for it a little bit but 99 percent of the time if you know yourself you know your cigars you could just old-fashioned just hold it exactly 
And plus, I'm also a big advocate to uh, to move the actual label up. Oh, and don't take it off until the very end to help like keep the yeah, construction. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> you told me that. I was gonna say I have done this before. It, 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 it's I normally take the band off, but I have done that before. If there's a crack, let's say, or if it's no, unraveling, you, you, you normally keep them on. No, I keep them on, but you're saying to move it up. Oh yeah, slide it towards the end. I'm just yeah. saying that, like, I I don't take, I never take them off because you have a you have a chance of ripping the actual tobacco exactly. off the cigar. You're exactly right. We recommend always leaving it on as long as possible, so that way the cigar will heat up the glue, and then it's easier to take off. Because if you take a a band off, let's say before you light it or right when you light it, you have a chance of that glue ripping the wrapper off, and then you know you could have a hole where smoke seeps out of, or you could end up ripping the whole wrapper off. And that's never good. Plus, when you smoke so many cigars a day, it's nice to keep the wrapper or you know the actual label on the cigar. So if someone asks uh, what you're smoking, you'd be like, oh, here it is. Because you lose track of what you're smoking. It, it's, it's a terrible thing. Exactly. It sucks. But yeah, so a few things to keep in mind when it comes to the occasion, who you're buying the cigar for, if you are buying the cigar for someone, do they smoke a lot? If not, get them a more mild cigar. If they are a cigar smoker, you know, get them something that's their preference. If they prefer a full body, get them a full body. If they do prefer mild, then you can get them a mild cigar. Have you ever uh, been re-gifted a cigar? Like, if I handed you a Pajon 1926, yeah. then a month later, I forget, and then you're like, oh, shit, what do I give them? And then you mm. give it back to me. I'm like, man, fuck this guy. I think um, there's plume on it, and then I keep it in my humidor, <laughs> and then I re- I give it to somebody else, and it just keeps going out. I don't know if I've been regifted a cigar, but I definitely have regifted a cigar before. I've had cigars that have been given to me that I personally don't like, that I will give to someone else. For example, and this is just by circumstance. Shoot, uh, someone gave me a Rocky Patel. I don't remember the exact one, but I knew that I wasn't a fan of that cigar. So I took that cigar and gave it to someone else who I knew hated. No, no. (laughs) Who I knew would enjoy it because uh, number one, they don't smoke cigars as often as I do. So worst case scenario, they're trying something new. But also I was like, okay, I think you'll still like this because you're not as picky as I am. Because I can be picky when it comes to cigars. I think uh, you brought up a good point here. There's a good opportunity. Uh, you can either donate the scar to the veterans. True. Or, you know, give it to somebody who would like it instead of, you know, yeah. getting rid of it. Or, or or letting it be in your humidor for such a long time, the flavor just, you know, kind of dissipates. But that'd be a very long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, very long time. depending on the cigar, you can age a cigar for five, seven years, no problem. Some you can even age for 20 years and they'll still taste good. It just depends on the cigar. So, quick quick sidetrack. If a cigar is full body, you can age it for longer without losing all the flavor. If a cigar is mild, you can't age it as long without like losing all the flavor and all the the, the body, so to say. Could you age it longer if you kept the cellophane on it so that the so, airflow doesn't go through? Great point, Jared. Bingo. If you have the cellophane on, it actually... In a way, the cigar ages slower, if that makes sense, because it's all about how much uh, exposure to air it has. So you bring up a good point. If you have a cigar that's in cellophane, it technically has a longer lifespan, if that makes sense. What we got to do is come up with when we're going to, when we want to age something and we're going to do it for a long period of time, we got to come up with a, a light skin, so to speak, instead of plastic cellophane wrap, you know, wrapper for, we got to come up with a a very skinny cedar wrapper. Mm. You know, like the, uh, some scars already come with it. Yeah. But it'd be nice if it actually covered the whole thing. Like Padron, for example, they don't have cellophane. That's actually very interesting. But So you have to put your own cellophane on. Yeah. But Padrones, but, since they're full body, they age very well for yeah. a long time. I've never had to put like a cellophane on. No, <laughs> it, it, we're just joking at this point. But Padron, for example, I think the oldest Padron I've had is like 10, 11 years old. And it was fantastic because it has so much... It was such a full body cigar that it still had, I would say it was mild at this point, but the flavor was so good. The flavors get better when you age the cigar. 
So if you have a full body cigar and you age it for 10 years, it's going to be maybe more mild medium, but it's going to taste really, really good because those flavor notes blend together so well. So how would something like um, the leaf by Oscar age over time? Because that's not wrapped in mm. cellophane or um, mm. a cedar. I mean, you could be in a cedar humidor, but it's wrapped in actual tobacco itself. Mm. Great advertising, by the way. But True. And you bring up a great point. I, I, I would assume that it's similar to cellophane because it's got a, a covering of sorts. So you would have a longer lifespan. Um, but I think the fact that you have an outer tobacco leaf on it would actually affect the flavor, not in a bad way necessarily, but it would definitely taste different after 10 years time. It would taste very different because it's being influenced from the outer wrapper too. Which is like the egg. It's in a, it's in a wooden box, you know, quantity of one Mm -hmm. and that's fully covered in tobacco, tobacco shaving. So, Mm. yeah. So I would assume that that would influence the flavors for sure. And not in a good or bad way, just it would change. Most of the time it's going to be good. I think aging cigars 90% of the time is a good thing. Some cigars are meant to be smoked right away and they actually get worse over time. Most cigars I feel like get better with age though. Yeah. And some people are religious of... I always age my cigars or they're the opposite i only smoke them right when i buy them and some people are kind of in the middle i love aging cigars uh the only hard part about it is opening the humidor and wanting to grab them because it's right there i'm gonna smoke it but when you age a cigar for years it's so rewarding at least in my opinion so what do you do when you go to a cigar lounge and you buy a box and the box is covered in an additional wrapper of plastic it's almost like a cellophane for the box itself. Yeah. So as long as those cigars were properly humidified before they yes. were wrapped, it's it's holding humidity. So yeah, but you wouldn't count that as aging if you let that in your own humidor, right? You want to take those out, let the let them breathe in your own humidor. I guess if you want to speed up the aging process, yeah. Um, if you want to have a longer lifespan, then you kind of leave them in there. I personally would take the plastic wrapping off yeah so that way there's more airflow um but regardless of how you do it the cigars should still be perfectly humidified and aging okay there should be no problems with that as long as you throw that box in the humidor you can't leave a box sitting out on your counter for years it's it's not good or in your car (laughs) definitely not in your car i know we're in florida but no definitely not in your car because you got to think about heat. Heat is a negative impact on your cigars. But yeah, so back to the occasion. One thing to also take into, take into account is um, what you're drinking at the time. Uh, are you drinking whiskey, beer, cocktails of some sort? So if you're going to a wedding and everyone's drinking i don't know beer or champagne maybe go for a mild cigar uh if you know that the crew is going to drink whiskey like at my wedding we're gonna be drinking whiskey you're gonna have you know maybe a medium to full body cigar something that we all like it, it it's, if using me as an example is bad because like we're all cigar smokers right so we're gonna be smoking what we usually smoke maybe a little bit of a more luxurious cigar but we kind of know what we're doing so you just got to be mindful of these things. What's the occasion? What are we drinking? Um, who is going to be there? Are they experienced with the cigars? Are they not so experienced? So it's just, it just comes down to being mindful of the people that you're gifting these cigars to. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah. I would say... What are you... What, so what would you recommend someone uh let's say i'm going to a wedding let's say i don't know a lot about cigars i'm going to a wedding and i'm like hey jared you're a cigar guy what should i get for my friend he doesn't really smoke cigars but i know that he's gonna want to smoke one because it's his wedding it's a big deal what should i get him 
I, I mean, I, I would say Connecticut because I'm pretty biased. I only smoke really dark cigars, full body cigars, usually Maduros, you know? What would be a recommendation, like, specifically? I've done this before for guests that I brought to the lounge that were out of town and give them my uh, Macanudo. That's $22. So it's a little bit more on the price of your side, but more or less it's, it's a nice transition for people who haven't actually smoked cigars for long periods of time. Yeah. I actually do like that Connecticut, I will be honest. I would recommend maybe like a Perdomo 20th anniversary Connecticut or a 30th anniversary even. They're, they're in the uh, 10 to $15 range. Um, so, but they're very great cigars. I mean, people would buy them for $20. That or like a, like you smoked today, a Davidoff Grand Cru. Yeah. Very mild, but. On the pricier side. On the pricier side, but not in a bad way. I mean, you enjoyed that cigar, I'm guessing? Yeah, I did. Which previous pri- Davidoffs yeah. I have not. Um, but I mean, if we're talking about price, I would always go, which I've actually smoked, I think, four of these last week. <laughs> uh, the Curly Heads. Yeah. One, two, three, boom. Look who's here. I just spawned Zachary Nikolai out of thin air, teleported him from his bed to the studio. I was not in bed. I was not in bed. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Well, I- I was doing shit. That's why my hands have pain on them. Sorry to interrupt whatever you were doing. Yeah. You, yeah. You better be sorry. <laughs> Don't care. It possibly- Actually, I, I can't even give it that credit. There's nothing more important than the Cigar Guys podcast. I am so glad you showed up. Exactly. Yeah, there is. Whatever you were doing, what were you doing that was more important than this? Oh, I didn't say what I was doing was more important than this. He uh, just said there's nothing more important. What would be more important than the Cigar Guys podcast? A Cigar Guys outing. By you know yourself? What? You know what? You know what? Yeah. By yourself? No, but he's just saying in general. He wasn't having a Cigar Guys outing by himself because it doesn't exist. He's saying if we're out and about together, that's way more important than- It is. It is. I agree. You know, Ava, Corona. Great girl. Oh, oh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Glad we're on the same page. So we're going to get into now cigars that would be appropriate to bring to a more casual setting. Someone invites you to a bonfire. Someone invites you to hang out at the house or at the cigar lounge. A christening. A what? Huh? What'd you say? Baptism. Oh, okay. Christening. Cr- christening. I, I didn't hear what he said. No. I was like, someone who's Kristen? Needs to, someone needs to go to church. <laughs> I thought he said Kristen. <laughs> I don't know if she likes cigars. I don't know. I'll have to ask. That's a good question. But cigars that would be appropriate to bring for a more casual setting. You don't want to spend a lot of money. You're bringing cigars for a few guys, you know. The economy is what it is, you know. Trump's not in office yet, so we got to think about that. There is one cigar we recommend quite a bit, which is this baby right here, the Basis Cigar. Check out our new website, basiscigar.com. Yes. Basis Cigar is definitely a great everyday cigar to impress your friends, impress fellow cigar smokers. But if you want to go even cheaper than that, we recommend like a, a Torfonte curly head. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I know I, we, we, we've said this a bunch over uh, our TikToks, our podcasts, but I always keep a box of a Torfonte curly heads like in my locker at my house. You know what? I see what you're saying about the mic. I feel like I can't hear myself that much. But, uh, yeah, so always keep a box of the curly heads. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, they're a very cheap stick. Not New York. New York, they're kind of expensive just because they're taxes. New York, well, they're doubled. Yeah, they're double the price. It's a $70 box here. It's a $140 box in New York. Um, but anyway, it's a good stick to hand out to people. People who don't smoke cigars often. Uh, people who you know smoke cigars a decent bit. They'll all kind of enjoy it. Um, I would say, too, even if you do smoke cigars regularly, it's still a great cigar for the price. Like, if you guys hand me a curly head, I would smoke it gratefully because I think it's a great cigar. Four or five dollars, I mean, yeah. you can't beat it for that price. Yeah. 
Even though I think they did increase their price by one dollar in the last year, but you're lying to me. That's not their fault. That's <laughs> Joe Biden's fault. I feel like I don't we, think I'll we, be able to financially recover we, from this. We have to describe a curly head instead of saying cheap cigar because it's a great cigar, maybe more cost effective cigar. Inexpe- cheap, inexpensive. Inexpensive. Because I think cheap kind of comes off as not a great smoke potentially. Yeah. Could be taken the wrong way. No, you bring up a good point. It's a very inexpensive cigar, but it's great. And it, this is this, this isn't sponsored. This isn't we buy the curly heads. Sometimes too, like when we can't decide, it's like Shoot, let me get a curly head. I can't decide. Jared, who spends good money on cigars, he he's the Perdone guy. Remember this. He buys curly heads. So that's a testament yeah. to how good they actually are. I think I had like four this week. Yeah. I might have one after this, you know. As you're smoking an El Timo, which was a Davidoff beforehand. I know. Today's a today's a crazy day. So, in order to financially recover, you have to smoke a curly head after. Yeah. Maybe three or four of them. I guess so. At the same time? <laughs> That's possible. Anything is possible. We could do that. Well, two months ago, we were at uh, Well... If you're smoking an 8x80, you can smoke three curly heads. Yeah. At the same time. It's like I working agree. out. You got to build it up. You know, build a little tolerance for it. But we have had... We have had seen we had seen a guy in real life hold two cigars in the same hand and go back and forth and smoke. That them. is true. Uh, Actually, can it, can I have your cigar? I won't smoke it. I promise. I don't trust you. It's for demonstration purposes only. This guy at the cigar lounge was alternating cigars. Oh no! Did the tips just touch? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh. I dropped my cigar. It's okay. Which one's whose? <laughs> <laughs> just like this. Mine's a bigger one. He was uh, alternating his cigars. You take a puff of this one and you take a puff of that one. You're never on your camera. You take a puff of this one and you take a puff of that one. Thank you, Zach. Here you go. Oh, 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 my bad. I couldn't tell he did it on purpose or not. Like, I accidentally put the ash in your mouth. I have done that before. I, I regret to admit that I was driving with a cigar in my hand and it was dark out. And I accidentally took the cigar this way and just mouthful of ash in my mouth. It was yeah. very disappointing. I love a mouthful of ash. Ass. I mean, <laughs> ash. Same thing. Not not the same thing. But it has happened, unfortunately. Jared still has to uh, experience this for himself. Unless he has and he's not telling us. He's embarrassed to tell us. You know, there, there are a few things left unsaid. You know, there are good experiences in my life I don't have to share with everybody. We have, <laughs> I have seen Alex light his cigar backwards before on accident and on purpose. This is true. Jared, same thing. As long as you finish, what's the difference? That's true. I mean, once you start, like, what do you do? Give up? Never give up. Never. Never gonna give you up. Another thing to consider is the length of time or kind of similar if uh, the people you're with aren't big cigar smokers, maybe give them a shorter cigar so that way you're not risking, um, you know, people that smoke cigars halfway and then you're kind of wasting, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's well, a good idea. I'm pretty sure we're all going to smoke. Um, you know, a beta, Ro- you know, beta Rothschild. <laughs> a what? A, a, a beta? <laughs> a beta uh, Rothschild before your wedding. You know, we're all gonna walk in there smelling like smoke. You know, it's gonna be great. Wait, before the wedding? Before? Maybe during? Because I'm, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna I'm be smoking speaking during, during the it. ceremony. Yeah, I, yeah, but he won't. He has to. He has to do you know, a little bit of talking. Uh, but uh, talking, kissing, kissing, gross, smoking. You never know. Can I can I uh, officiate your wedding? Yes. I found out that you could get a 24-hour license to officiate a wedding. I'm canceling the guy I have right now. I'll do it for free, too. Actually, if you do that, that means I get to be bumped up one person in the line of Grimsman. That's true. You know? That's, that is true. That is true. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. And we save money, I think, right? I don't know. I don't know how it works. I'm sure we do. Yeah, that's what my cousin did in New York. Uh, she had uh, her uncle officiate the wedding. 
How much does it cost to get it for that 24 hour license or whatever? I don't know, 20 bucks maybe, 50 bucks if that. <laughs> you get the book and everything, you know? That's actually pretty cool. No. I'm, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I didn't even know you could do it until I went to New York. There you go. It's like mm-hmm. a fishing license or like a boating license. You get the 24, uh, well, boating license, you get the, the year one. You know, it's like, ah, I'm not really, you know, an I active just, boater or jet skier. I just really want to say, you know, the power invested in, in me by the great Republican state of Florida. That, that's what mm. I would say. We just sell that, you know, offer uh, Zach services to fish and weddings through like Minect or whatever, you know. That's true. <laughs> Have a local cigar guy come to your wedding. And he can stay for the whole reception to be the cigar guy that hands out cigars, recommends cigars. You got to either pay Zach in cash or food and drink after the ceremony. So, Or both. I'm like, I don't want to speak to him any more than I have, but... Uh, oh, get ordained online. <laughs> there it is. Oh, even better. He could do it right now. We should sell... I wonder if there's like a monthly subscription service to where you can just keep that license active. Just keep reapplying. I mean, 20 bucks, like... Have Zach show up to people's weddings randomly and be like, whoa, sorry, I'm supposed to officiate the wedding. He's all dressed up. He's ready to go. He has a cigar in hand. I mean, we could, we could corner the cigar market and we can also corner the Albanian market. Oh, so it's it looks like it's county-based. You just need... Oh, that's right. That is what he said. You need a judge in your county to, to sign you off. I could get that without doing this class. There you go. All you gotta do is read a script anyway. Let's see. Let me look up. Should we do this like right after the podcast? Let me look at beep county. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. North Park Ave. It's in Sanford. We go out for cigars after. <laughs> so. Breaking news, we can officiate your wedding. So let us know. Send us an email. Message us on Manect. We will come and officiate your wedding and be the official cigar guys to pass out cigars at a discounted rate, cut and light cigars, and make sure everyone's having a good time. You get the all-in-one package. We're putting a lot of pressure there's, on Zach. There's, so. there's a three-day waiting period. <laughs> Just let so, us know so, three days before. <laughs> so, well, no, you have to. <laughs> so if I, if I get my license, I have to wait three days before I officiate someone. Is that like a cool-down period? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like a, you know, approval time period. Like you No, pre- no, no. It's like you're approved, and then you have to wait three days, and then you could do That's it. That's like... When you practice, you have three days of practice. When you buy a gun, you got to wait a few days. Yeah. They got to do the background check. You got to take the class, you know, make sure you're doing it right. Read your script. Get your script. If you're taking meds. I mean, three uh, days this, is not this bad. Is, oh, you know what? I don't like this website anymore. This is one of those, you know. Fake news sites. We're all, we're all, we're all one universe something i don't know you know the universal like uh bumper stickers once you get this license i want to see you i want you to update yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i want you to update your linkedin once you get the license to make sure everybody knows (laughs) oh yeah about 35 to 60 bucks varies by county i'll do it yeah i mean they charge what 500 bucks for that i don't know you would know we could do i i don't know Uh we we could do are you getting it for free i don't know i'll pay you to do it Okay. For the wedding, just have the Zach act like he doesn't know what he's doing. Be like, oh, sorry, what am I doing? And he pulls out, like, you know, the Bible, then he gets up out there. And he's like, sorry, I forgot I had a job to do. And then he starts, you know. I'm going to pull out my Albanian Bible. Is anyone against these, against these two people getting married? I am. <laughs> wait, wait, are you saying that? He's, he's no, saying I would that. be saying that. No, uh, uh. Someone's following the conversation. What I would do is I have my book in one hand. Be like, uh, does anyone have any valid reason that these two should not wed? And then I'd reach behind, and pull out my AR, look up. No, okay, good. 
Oh, so he's actually and a good then, friend. I was just going to say, just pull out a cigar, start to light it while you're reading it, you know? I'm going to get your ex-boyfriend to be there. And then- Pause? <laughs> Wait, what? This is a joke. Pause? Should we pause it so you can explain this, or? <sighs> Boop. Anyway, so. We'll, we'll, we'll edit that out. We'll, we'll edit that out. I'm texting her right now to ask if I could officiate. <laughs> or just let it be a surprise. Why would the answer oh, be? That'd be so funny. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I just said, but you guys didn't say anything. Oh, Where's the you. pastor? No, I'm saying if he's in line as like the groomsman behind your brother, right? Mm-hmm. He's just like, oh shit, what am I doing? He gets out of line and he goes up there. That would be there so funny. There is no pastor. Funny. It's just Zach. That would be so funny. We can't practice it like, you know, during the rehearsals. It's just got to be a surprise. He's on got the wedding hours day. to practice. No, 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 I'm saying like, you know, no one has to know besides us and everyone who watches So we'll this. have a fake officiant at the rehearsal. Exactly. And then when the day yes. comes, it's going to be Zach. So Zach could actually see for it firsthand and then take notes and then do it the next well, day. I can, well, you know me, I could joke around and be like, oh, can I, can I practice too? Mm. And then, you know, she'll get annoyed and, and be like. Like, no, just let him do his thing. And then I'll be like, no, 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 no. Uh, let me try. Let me try. We got to make sure I'll Zach practice. has tons of gin beforehand, too. Facts. Hendrix. Facts. I can hey, see this going very well. Before you go up there, you can just pull out do a little. All right, here we go. Before the bride comes out. Exactly. Because, yeah, the last thing you want to see is the guy officiating your wedding getting drunk. You know what? And you know what? I'll, I'll remember to step out of the way when they take the picture of you guys kissing. No, mm. no, no. Not a lot of people remember that. He's not going to be getting drunk. You'll already be hammered by the time he's reading it. <laughs> well, of course, because he's a professional. Yeah. Only an unprofessional would get drunk while doing it. I'm going to be up there like, God said... She should listen to his man, her man, his man, her man, her man. God did. <laughs> that's, how I'm gonna, yeah, that's, it. that's how it's going to go. Exactly like that. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. Feel free to come and uh, view the ceremony. From a distance. Or we yeah. could do a Cigar Guys Live. We could, actually. Yeah, we could. There was talk of Facebook Live, so we could easily just throw it up on YouTube. Restream it. I think we talked about this before. We can restream it. Yeah. So no one misses out. Oh, man. But yeah, okay. What else is there? Special or unique occasions that might require a rare or exotic cigar. This is for when you're really trying to impress the people that are there. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is this is a a very important one to like a select few. Um, like, I'll give you an example. Um, I was out at you know uh, an undisclosed location uh, in New York. Always is. Um, I was out over there for it was a it was a special event. It was for judging uh, puppies, and these were extravagant puppies the best puppies someone say the best puppies um the best puppies and uh, basically you needed to invest a large sum of money that's what i'll say uh to be part of this and these puppies were the ones being chosen um for leaders right how old are these puppies if they're supposed to be leaders. No, 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 no. They're for the leaders. Like leaders of country. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, like different countries. Uh, yeah, so. so uh, Are we still talking about uh, I'm getting dogs? It. Okay. Yeah, so. No, no, they're real real puppies, real animals. Yeah, yeah. So when I went there, uh, you were expected uh, to bring five cigars, five different cigars um, for the people who invited you, right? Mm. And, you know, those John, Frank, Simon, um, and then 
you know, those, uh, what was, what was, uh, these are all aliases. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Matt, you know, so you had to give a cigar to each of them, uh, to be able to come in and it was, it was pretty intense because if they didn't like your cigar, they'll kick you out. Mm. Yeah. So what were the cigars that you brought to this? Event? So I brought a pre embargo Cohiba, right? And then I brought a uh, Davidoff Royale. I brought, um, uh, what else did I bring? Um, and these are just uh, everyday Cohiba smokes. Cohiba Spectre, you know? you know, yeah, for them, yeah. Brought a Cohiba Spectre. Then I brought a Monte Cristo number four. And then uh, the fifth one was a special edition cigar that was only made um, for a certain company that I cannot name. I'm trying and, to piece together like how much of this story is true. Sounds like all of it's true. He's, Zach would, he's winking at me, so I don't know. Oh, I didn't. I didn't even wink. I don't know how to wink. Look, look. I don't know how to wink. Ready? Did I wink? No. Yeah. See, I don't know how to wink. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, uh, back to the back to the, the the story. Well, not to the story. Back to the podcast. It is good to have a select few cigars for very special occasions. Um. If your brother, your friend, your best friend is getting married, uh, you want to be able to gift that to them uh, or even smoke it for yourself. If someone got a new job, if someone, uh, um, I mean, just anything, you bought a house, right? You know, first thing you should do, you know, you should give them a little nice gift. You know, oh, they just spent all this money on a house. Congratulations. Um, so it, it's good to be knowledgeable about not only expensive cigars, but expensive well-made cigars because you could you could have an expensive cigar uh like the year of the dragon right is it's an it's kind of an expensive cigar it's what 50 or 60 bucks mm, 80 oh okay so it's 80 dollars do i think it's worth 80 dollars i personally i wouldn't think so uh, but you do have those cigars that are up there you know 80 100 120 dollars that uh it's it's worth it for the experience um not as like a daily. Yeah, like you know taking I mean? shots of a Callan M, you know. No, but you put it exactly correct. Thank Just you. because a cigar is expensive doesn't mean it's good. You have to consider quality as well. And part of that is basically, okay, smoke what you enjoy. Yeah. Whether it's inexpensive or expensive. Yeah. And... Consider what the person you're buying for oh, yeah. would like as well. Yep. So yeah, you don't have to spend a lot of money on a cigar, but be considerate of what they would enjoy. Would they appreciate the Year of the Dragon or would they not? But what if someone buys you a really expensive cigar that you hate? Is it still the thought that counts? I would say so. I would still smoke it. I wouldn't want to give the wrong impression and offend that person. Okay. All right. I'll keep that in mind. I'm a nice guy. Especially like if they don't know much about cigars, right? Yeah. Because you get those some people that uh, they know that you like cigars. So they're just going to go to a shop and be like, hey, I need to bu- buy a really nice cigar uh, for whoever. Uh, can you help me out? And then, you know, that sales guy, depending on who you get, could either give you, you know, a really good cigar or just a really expensive cigar. Mm. Um and most of the times it's a ladder, but you know, someone ends up gi- gifting you a bad cigar that's expensive. They think that they did something good, so it's like you know, just take it. They just hate appreciate you. It. Yeah. It would, <laughs> it's ignorance. They would. It would be rude to tell them, "Oh, it was a bad cigar." No, you take the cigar. You say, "Thank you very much. I know you spent a lot of money on this. I really appreciate it." And then you smoke it and enjoy it the best you can. Now, I have bought someone a pretty not super expensive cigar, but. A decently priced cigar for a wedding, and it came full circle, and he just gave it to someone else. And I'm like, "We just actually just talked about that before he came here." Yeah, regifting cigars. Yeah, yeah. How, how did that make you feel? Uh, how was, you, actually, how did you find out? I saw it. I went in. Oh, uh, oh, that's, that's uh, pretty, I went in someone's hotel. Messed up. I went into someone's hotel room, and I'm like, "Where'd you get the cigar?" Because I knew. Wait, they weren't sleeping. Zach right? was the only yeah. person that would have brought that cigar because he's a cigar guy. 
No one else there was a cigar guy. So he's like, huh, that looks familiar. Yeah. Where'd that come from? Yeah. So uh, I saw it just on the countertop and I'm like, I'm like, oh, where'd you get that cigar? And they're like, oh, so-and-so gave it to me. I'm like, are you Liar. Gonna, are you going to smoke it? Because I know, you know, he didn't smoke cigars. He's like, no, I was going to take it home. Maybe give it to someone. I'm like, well, can I have it back? Like, I gave it to him. You know, he's like, oh, yeah, sure. You know, um, Holy I, sh- I, I, I did feel a little, uh, a little disappointed. Um, was someone we know? We're going to name drop him? No. Nah, uh, I mean, yeah, no. Nah. Someone I know. So know. did you, um, did you re gift that after we, you know, coming full circle? <laughs> back to you? No, nope. I, uh, I went downstairs after the, uh, the, it was a wedding. I went downstairs after the wedding. Got a glass of wine at the bar, sat outside, and smoked it. I would have done the same thing. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, what would you do? I, I would do the same thing. <laughs> exactly. I'm just trying to think, how, how could this turn out any better? Listen, you have a, a very nice cigar in front of you. You look to your right, not a cigar guy. You look to your left, which is my right, not a cigar guy. Why would you waste such a great cigar on someone that wouldn't appreciate it? Why wouldn't you smoke it for yourself? Interesting. Now I'm kind of looking back at all the cigars I've handed out. I've never gotten one back. So I don't know if it's like, did they give that to somebody else? Oh, no. I sold all those cigars they gave me. (sighs) See how that made you feel? See how that made you feel? That's how I felt. I'm going to have to pause again. That's that's how I felt. (laughs) Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it was, it was, I swear to God, I mean, you know, I don't get emotional, right? I get even. Lots of the wine. <laughs> <laughs> it, but it, it kind of worked out because you kind of treat yourself to the cigar, right? It's like a $5,000 yeah. cigar, right? It's a, no, nah, it wasn't that cheap. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> it's a golden cigar. Is that one uh, Andrew Tate smoked or Tristan, did Tr- Tristan smoke it? Yeah. That was only like a thousand dollars, though. So, you know, I thought it was like twenty grand or something. <sighs> I don't know. I'll watch the video again. Yeah, I could be wrong. I mean, it, it was a long time ago. Twenty grand. Now that's like an average cigar. You know, that's that's. I mean, that's my daily. <laughs> that's my daily. <laughs> yeah, loss. Zach makes a little more money than I do, so it makes sense. You know, I'm more yeah. of a ten grand cigar kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah, my dad cut me off though. Instead of twenty grand a day, now it's ten grand a day. Mm. It sucks, dude. Mm. So. <laughs> yeah, <Damn. laughs> that does suck. Now you're at my level. It's rough out here. I had to, I had to switch. I had to switch from uh, Macallan thirty to Macallan eighteen. It was it was wow. tough. It was tough. Honestly, the worst part about it is the selection. There's not a big selection for twenty ten grand dollar cigars that's the hardest part that's the hardest part yeah i walk in i'm like do you have any cigars and they're like oh yeah here's this 15 dollars one i'm like do you have any real cigars <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's very annoying honestly like you have to go to like there's like five places in the country that actually have them i know it's my house your house jared's house and <laughs> <laughs> a couple shops yeah <laughs> damn <laughs> So let's come back to this Elsa Timo honest review. What do you think of it? It's pretty good, but would I spend five hundred dollars again? I just I don't know. Hmm. I'm not sure. How, how much was it actually? We don't know. Actually, actually I don't know. I was gifted. I, no, it, it was in the. So uh, sh- listen, Corona Cigars monthly cigar pack has been like pretty darn good. As of the recent few months, he got that. He got a Davidoff Grand Cru. I don't know what else you got, but those two alone make up. I was like, dang. Yeah. Damn, we're going to have to upgrade our locker. I know. I think we should all just like split one of the big lockers. Are those available? There's one available, I think. Oh, okay. If not, we'll make it available. <laughs> I that just wish, true. one thing I wish, I wish the big lockers were on top. Mm, yeah. Who wants to bend down? To like mouse level. No, no, no. Well, uh, it's funny you say that because one time, because there's like these little like slits in the wood, and uh, one time someone's uh, cutter fell through, mm. and so occasionally I get free stuff in my locker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, someone's super nice. You know, you know what we got to do? We got to buy a corner out by four, 
mm. right? And then remodel it, you know, because we're renting space. We should be allowed to remodel. Uh, cut it open, put a big door, you know. So we'll put a one, glass. We'll, gl- we'll put a glass. Kind of like the door is behind you. Exactly. No, oh, yeah, we'll, glass, no, no, we'll, glass. we'll get I a like glass that. door so people could see. So they know. Like, yeah. Which motivates us to make more money and buy more expensive cigars and bottles. Exactly. You, we, you know the penthouse suite, right? You know, they all have glass everywhere. I, I mean, that's just a big thing. I don't make the rules. I just follow them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know if I want my locker to be glass, though. I don't want people seeing what's in there or what's not in there. Because mm, you have contraband in there. I like people to have a mystery of what's in there. That's why you got to you gotta do that frosted glass. They see an outline. Mm. <laughs> so, we're gonna- so they know it's full. <laughs> they just don't know what it is full of. Because, hmm. too, think about it, Zach. You're not supposed to have Cuban cigars in there, which we don't. So you got to have some level of privacy because you don't want someone yeah, seeing like, that. I, I like the frosted glass idea. Then we'll put like an LED light panel in the back so they see the shadow of everything. And then we'll put like a Louis 13 bottle that's like just empty in there. I think about upgrading my locker to have a, you know, a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi powered security alarm. So if I leave it open for like longer than five seconds, it automatically <laughs> goes off. <laughs> <laughs> then it takes pictures of anyone who's nearby. As potential culprits of like who is standing behind me as I open the locker, mm. just for extra security. This is Jared opening up his locker. <laughs> I do. It is true. Under five seconds. In the cigar lounge and in bed. Top tier performance right there. Someone said it's uh, time used wisely, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Um, I would say educate yourself on cigars. Um, at least a little bit. Even if you you don't smoke, you know, a lot of people uh, will smoke a cigar for a special occasion. Their first son being born, their, you know, uh, their wedding, their anything. And you don't want to walk in not knowing anything. I would I would say that, that should be in the man book. How to cut, light a cigar, a little bit of knowledge of it. Like for example, remember uh, New Year's? Those guys brought a box. We of talked cigars. about that before yeah. you got here. We just before talked I spawned about that you in. Before you got here, yeah. we talked about that. Yeah, we shared the story. So you're absolutely right. It should be in the man book. How to cut and light a cigar. Very basic cigar one on one knowledge. Should be in the women book too. It should be because who's going to cut and light my cigar for me? Listen, if I, <laughs> God. if I'm out and I'm like, shoot, I forgot my lighter or I forgot my cutter, mm. and a girl's like, it's like, oh, I'll cut your cigar for you. That's it. I'm proposing. Next thing you know, I'm officiating the wedding. That's it. What if, it, what if your cigar gets burned though? What was that one of those $20,000 sticks you smoke all the time and get burned? She's not the one. She, she didn't study enough. She didn't practice enough. She didn't read this book right here. She didn't read The Ultimate Guide to Cigar Smoking, you hear which about is the, on Amazon. You heard about that guy that insured his like cigars that was worth like 50 grand or mm, something? I did hear about that. And then he smoked it and said they got lost in a fire. <laughs> fire damage. Or, yeah. Fire damage is it's real. It is real. They actually, he won that case, and then they countersued him for fraud, because he perp- or for uh, um, uh, shoot, what's that? What's a word when you light something on fire on purpose? Arson. Arson. Yeah. <laughs> Which is true. I mean, you intentionally light your house on fire to claim the insurance check. That's fraud. You intentionally light your cigars on fire. Unfortunately, that is fraud. Can't get you participate in the Chase uh, Infinite Money glitch. <laughs> That's fraud. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people were coming in and requesting checks for some reason. I don't know, like it just the, the amount of checks printed. That was a dumb. In this past thing. month, was like you know doubled. You know, people start GoFundMe's so they could recover their account. Yes, I didn't know that. So, what Zach is trying to say is, don't deposit a check to yourself with funds that don't exist. Because guess what? That's fraud. Don't deposit a check. 
Everything that Alex just said, don't do it to your account. Do it to a friend's account. And then you'll be fine. <laughs> That's What's a joke is that is not legally binding. There was a TikTok I'm not responsible. of a skit, and the guy's like, oh, yeah, I deposited the check, got 20 grand. And the girlfriend comes home, and she's like, my account's negative 20 grand. The bank's been calling me. And he's like, oh, dang, that sucks. Yeah, I think we should spend time away from each other. Like, I just <laughs> <laughs> oh, getting, getting some bad ideas. So a lot or of people, good. a lot of people didn't realize like, you can't just put that. Okay, whoa, whoa! Zach's passionate about this topic. You can't it, like, you can't just put that money back. People are expecting like, oh, give the money back and then they're free and clear. It's like, no, they stop your whole bank account. Any funds that you had are now seized until like their investigation is over, and a lot of people are getting screwed because you know the. Two thousand, three thousand bucks they have in their account is now seized by, you know, whoever. Listen, it all goes back to the school system. It's their fault that they didn't teach finances in high school. So really, the money should be taken from the Department of Education and given back to these poor souls. Did you learn how to write a check in school at all? No. I think I did in elementary school. Isn't it self-explanatory? It has like the the directions on the check. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but uh, I mean, a lot of people don't know. I grew up in a restaurant, so it's like I was writing checks, you know, 15. You know, but Zach came up with a good idea. From now on, when I go to Corona, I'm going to purchase all my cigars with checks. They don't, they don't take checks. You know, we stopped taking checks in like 2015 at the restaurant. All right. Never Just mind. at the Oviedo <laughs> store. But, but that's like, that's late. Everyone's, everyone, people stopped taking checks in like 2007. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I, I've written a few checks. For a restaurant. Oh. Write the food. check. Well, it's different. Jared's talking about buying the whole restaurant. He's not talking about buying his meal. He's buying the restaurant when he goes in. That's a huge jump from cigars to a restaurant. Or the lounge. Hmm. I don't like what you guys are doing. I'm just going to buy the place. And that brings us back to having a celebratory cigar. Jared just bought three new, three new locations. We're going to go have some Drone 50 Years, some Unicorns, and some Alfonso's, and some San Pere. Underrated for sure. Some blue labels, some red labels, some purple labels. Green. <laughs> I think I had green. Sure. You had blue, sure. you had red. That's true. All right. Yeah. Well, I think we'll about wrap it up. We will. So thank so, you for tuning in. And make sure to check out BasisCigar.com, our new website. Sign up for the newsletter to get uh, an exclusive discount um, when you purchase a Basis Cigar or any 1102 branded cigars. Um, yeah. Until Thanks, next guys. time. Thanks, guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short-form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below.